Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Sunday, January 8th, around 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Seven magnitude earthquake bangs in the ring of fire at Vanuatu, producing zero tsunamis, and that's good news. And the big story, more extreme weather on tap for California as a series of atmospheric river events arrive. Keep calm. It's atmospheric river time. Relentless parade of cyclones from Pacific Ocean to bring more flooding, heavy snows to the West Coast. And there is a flood warning in effect for Mendocino County and Northwest California through Tuesday afternoon. SR1, 175, and 128 are closed due to flooding. Parking is not so heavenly. Take a look at the parking at Heavenly. Yeah, perfect storm created gridlock in South Lake Tahoe. And Sioux Falls could hit 5,000 loads of snow as they try to clear the streets from an unprecedented blizzard. Atmospheric river of moisture continues to batter California. A steady stream of atmospheric river events continue to batter California through early this week, with the most potent system arriving on Monday. In this weather pattern, additional rain on saturated soil will lead to considerable flood impacts, including rapid water rises, mudslides, burn-scarred debris flows, and widespread mountain snow and high winds will also produce issues across the state. So that is your fate. Here is the forecast model, and you can see it is currently snowing heavy in California and raining, and that will taper off by tomorrow morning when a second system moves on shore later in the afternoon. And this will be pummeling. Take a look at some of the severe weather, lightning and thunder that will be associated with the heavy rain, flooding, Sierra cement. And wow, it just continues here through Tuesday as it moves to Southern California Tuesday. That will be your lose day. By that time, we'll have snow in the mountains and the totals will be excellent. And then a third atmospheric river slams California Wednesday, bringing the heaviest moisture to Southern California. So welcome to the show, folks. That is atmospheric river after river. And look at those snow totals in the Sierras. It's looking like four to six more feet through Wednesday. Hello. Seismic update. We did have a seven magnitude. It was initially 7.2, downgraded to seven. Was offshore at 27.7 kilometers of depth. There is no tsunami warning. And did they nail it? Yes. Let's see if there's still no tsunami warning. No tsunami warning at Vach or advisory. Good news. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We've got Reventador, Fuego, Suanosima, Sungay. And there was some interesting activity over the last 36 hours, if we can just scroll down and get to it. We had a, quite a big popper at Shivalush to 25,000. And we have Marapi back on the list. And lots of things going on here. And I can't pick them up. Here we go. Nevado de Ruiz. Eruptive activity continues with a nice puff. And here Marapi in western Sumatra, Indonesia. New freomagmatic, perhaps, eruption this morning. And that would be caused because some lava met the groundwater there, causing a violent explosion. And here we are over at Two Pineapples. I want you all to subscribe there. Give them a thumbs up. They are covering the new Kilauea eruption like no one else. Take a look at the initial pulse of lava down in the bottom right there. Beautiful in the archived footage. And the lava lake is glowing as the sun is about to rise on the Big Island. Spectacular. Space weather news update. We do have an uptick on the sun. Several of the active regions, 3181 specifically, which is Earth-facing, has been shooting out some sea flares. We're more worried about 3182 and a new region coming over the limb. Uh-oh. But good news is that none of these are really producing any coronal mass ejections, so there is no threat to Earth. But the sun is quite active. This is one of the most active phases we've seen on the sun as far as sunspot activity in the entire cycle. So we are approaching solar max, and it's looking like that, but very little in the avenue of major solar flares. So we'll keep a close eye on the sun for you and we will warn you of any threats as they develop. Now poultry farms say millions of chickens could starve from rail delays. Union Pacific blames weather for causing service disruptions but say that the trains are reaching foster farms. So hopefully the chickens will make it because we've had a egg shortage supply in our city 
and the prices of eggs have gone to $8 a dozen for organic, which is why we make our own. Now, inventor in Baja is testing a plan to cool the earth by mimicking a volcanic eruption, and apparently he lives in a trailer. Make Sunsets is the name of the company. It plans to launch three balloons these are test launches to release sulfur dioxide to cool the atmosphere in January. And they're all doing it from Baja, Mexico. So hopefully someone goes down there and stops it before it gets out of hand. Now, an old NASA satellite is falling from the sky this weekend. And May, you may well get a glimpse. And it's going to be... Monday morning, plus or minus 13 hours. The California-based Aerospace Corp. is targeting Monday morning, give or take 13 hours, along a track passing over Africa, Asia, and the, Mid Asia and the Middle East, and the westernmost areas of North and South America. So this baby could come in anywhere, but because of its size, it is probably going to burn up. Now, doesn't it look like, like a tiny house with a couple solar panels? Really weird. Strange new discovery reveals UV radiation played a part in mass extinction events. We've talked about this. We've postulated about it, but now it is being confirmed. Yes, dying in the sun. Direct evidence for elevated UVB radiation at the end of the Permian mass extinction. And this may also have something to do with the mass extinction at all of the geomagnetic excursion boundaries, including the Le Champ at 41,500 years ago. Could it be that UVB radiation is what's driving evolution and extinction? We think so. Now, we were going to premiere this yesterday, but we just didn't have time. So on this day in history, yesterday, January 7th, 1610, Galileo discovers the moons of Jupiter. And I don't think that Galileo was the first to discover the moons of Jupiter, in my opinion. <laughs> there were others we just forgot. At the same time, we have news on, on Jupiter. Io is having major volcanic outbursts. Since last summer, Jupiter's third largest moon, Io, has been lighting up the Jovian system with major bursts of volcanic activity. As the solar system's most volcanically active world, Io is no stranger to such outbursts. But this year's display has been unusually energetic. And here we can see some of the plasma in Io's plasma torus here made up of ionized sulfur as seen by Io Io. Hmm, interesting. So not only does Io have a plasma torus around it, but it is also erupting. Very active moon. Very active moon. As paleontologists are accused of making up data on dinosaur-killing asteroid impact. Now this charlatan team claimed that they calculated the extinction of the dinosaurs to the season <laughs> and anyone that is claiming that they can go back and be that specific 64, 66 million years ago, well, should be, you should raise an eyebrow. In December 2021, a team of paleontologists published data suggesting that the asteroid impact that ended the reign of the dinosaurs could be pinned down to a single season, springtime, 66 million years ago. <laughs> but thanks to the analysis of fossilized fish remains at the famous site in North Dakota, another team went there and said, eh, the former group is faking their data. It's all, for, it's all about the money. Always follow the money. Now, an ancient Mayan structure is aligned to the mysterious 260-day calendar. We've been covering these massive cities that have recently been uncovered using LIDAR, but now there is evidence that Mesoamerican cultures used the 260-day calendar centuries earlier than previously known. This new research shows that many of the structures are oriented in a line with the solstices, quarter days, or lunar cycles. And this is all in the 260-day year. For instance, a number of the structures are positioned in a way that corresponds with sunrises on February 11th, in October 29th, that's separated by 260 days. And here you can see that sunrise and perfect perpendicular alignment with the structures. Here's the paper we'll leave you in case you want to do some light reading. Origins of Mesoamerica Astronomy and Calendar, Evidence from the Olmec and Maya Regions. And we have to get ready. I'm going to about to jump in the car right now to head off on a 10-hour round trip with Rex Bear. So stay tuned 
for some live streams on Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. I know it was a little rushy, but I, I have to get out of Dodge because I got a lot of driving to do. Please support our work and become a Patreon. We love you.